Portage in Maine. This famous intersection here in downtown Winnipeg is where Portage Avenue and Main Street meet. This is often referred to as the crossroads of Canada due to its longitudinal position at the center of Canada. And of course, it's known as the windiest and coldest intersection across the country. But over the last four decades, this intersection has been closed to pedestrian traffic. Tonight, we look back in time at its origins, discuss recent developments, and talk about why it's such a hot topic among Winnipeggers. This is Winnipeg, historically Winnipeg's most important intersection and arguably for Western Canada. Portage in Maine is now home to Winnipeg's tallest buildings and sits at the heart of the city, but it always wasn't like this. This intersection was once just a plot of land, described as a low, swampy area covered with scrub oak and poplar. In the early 1820s, when the fur trade was around, you had uh, Upper Fort Gary, built just a couple of blocks from here, and Lower Fort Gary up near Selkirk, and uh, a couple of roadways appeared. And one of them was a north-south link connecting the two forts and beyond into the interlake where there was fish and there were furs and there was uh, timber that could be harvested and sent back down. And you had another route, uh, the Portage Road, that went from the fort out to Portage La Prairie and beyond. Over time, the area of Portage in Maine attracted a lot of people not linked to the fur trade, including businessmen, land speculators, doctors and others. But it was in 1862 when a man named Henry McKenney purchased some land and built a general store. It was thought that he was uh, a little bit crazy. It was uh, prone to flooding in this area. It wasn't quite at the settlement we now call Winnipeg that was a little bit further north. It wasn't quite around Upper Fort Gary, which is further to the south. It was kind of in a no man's land. But McKenney stuck to his guns, thinking it was a good idea. And sure enough, others followed. When Winnipeg became a city in 1874, its first major public works project was to grade Portage Avenue into a proper road. So really from the, the, the time the city first, first started, it already saw Portage Avenue as one of its major streets. And just as modern buildings started popping up, as the West started growing, the, even today, the regional banking headquarters, the grain companies uh, and telecommunications companies, things like that, all wanted to set up in and around Portage and Maine. And it has stayed to this day uh, you know, the business heart of the city. Many photos showcase Portage and Maine as a bustling center hub for Winnipeggers and pedestrians could walk through the intersection, but that all changed in 1979. Developers at the time agreed to build an adjacent tower and an underground mall on the condition that pedestrians would be forced to walk below street level. The success of the Richardson building attracted uh, an international development company based in Montreal called Trizac. And Trizac came to the city in the early 70s and said, hey, we want to build our own big, even bigger development at Portage and Main, Kitty Corner. And it was, you know, a, a nickname like the Trizac development at the time, but they were going to build two towers, two 34-story towers with a hotel in the middle, a mall beneath it. And the city was uh, very eager to, uh, to have Trizac come and build here. They saw it as a real, uh, badge of having made it as a modern city to have this big developer come here. So it agreed to do a lot of things for Trizac. In February 1979, the underground concourse opened. It was largely funded by the city. I think it was about $6 million from the city and about $1 million from the property owners on the four corners. And that's how all of this came about, kind of the modern era of Portage and Maine. Fast forward to 2024, the membrane of the underground walkway is in need of repairs, and there isn't really much for Winnipeggers to do at Portage and Maine. There have been many cracks over the last four decades to reopen the intersection, but all have failed. Now Winnipeg Mayor Scott Gillingham is hoping to reopen the intersection to pedestrians 
by the summer of 2025. It's a debate that's probably going to go on until a decision is made one way or another. It's a lot, eh? You know, number one, we've got these ugly looking barricades, as, as you can see uh, around there, and have been ugly since the day they were put up. You know, uh, I think people want to see them gone. Uh, there are others. The other side of it is you get pedestrian traffic going across. It's going to slow everything down. Portage in Maine is where Winnipeg's most important celebrations and protests have occurred. Armistice Day in 1918, the general strike of 1919, and of course the return of professional hockey in 2011. And you can't forget the Grey Cup celebrations on numerous occasions, just to name a few. But since 1979, nothing has really happened at the intersection except driving through it. If you look at all the old pictures, this here was just packed all the time. But you gotta remember, people live down here, work down here. Uh, it was an area where you could walk, you could take your bicycle, uh, you could take a streetcar. Uh, but I was saving the Metropolitan Theater with the group, uh, Friends of the Met. I became the historian and I started looking into the employees. How far away did they live? And none of the employees lived any further than Arlington Street. Because they could take a bus, they could take a bicycle, or a streetcar and get to work, eh? You know, so downtown was always flourishing. In the 60s, they decided that uh, downtown should be business only. So they restricted uh, residential and uh, they couldn't figure out why downtown died. Agnew says the downtown is slowly reviving with more residential units popping up. But he says a big stepping stone into getting downtown busy again would be to open up the intersection to pedestrians once and for all. I think there, there will be some new businesses come in. Um, it's, will it be strong enough to, to make it worthwhile? I, I don't really know. I, I, it's, it's just one of those things that if you do do it, you'll just have to sit back and, and watch and see if it does. The question remains, if Portage in Maine does open up to pedestrians in the summer of 2025, what will Winnipeg's downtown look like in the next five to ten years? It's unfortunate that, that it wasn't uh, uh, forward thinking about downtown that will probably end up reopening the intersection to pedestrians. It was a financial matter that will probably end up reopening it to pedestrians. But uh, if you travel to bigger cities, you know, Toronto, or you go over to, you know, London and places like that, there are intersections much bigger than this, much busier than this that work just fine with pedestrians and with cars running through them. Even in Winnipeg, Portage and Maine isn't the busiest intersection in the city. And we have pedestrians and we have cars, and I think we'll be just fine. I think five years from now, we'll see an open intersection that'll allow people to flow back to, from the Forks to the Exchange District, you know, into the Broadway area, and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be open. How good do you feel when you start your day with silk? When you fill it up with goodness? Blend it your way. Stir in something perfect. Or enjoy it one sip at a time. You feel plenty good. Time has passed me by Without you by my side When I think of all that's gone and cold symptoms? Buckley's knows you'll try anything for relief. It's not that we don't believe in the near mythical powers of chicken noodle soup. We just believe in Buckley's more. Buckley's. It tastes awful and it works. Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. Every dollop is so rich and creamy it makes any sandwich delicious. Mmm. Irresistible. Hellman's Mayonnaise. Chuck's getting a checkup thanks to a recent health scare. He's also thinking about his family and how to protect them should anything happen to him. With North Cover Life Insurance, he'll be so well covered that it'd be like he's wearing a parka. 
And like a parka, North Cover keeps you well protected. Looking good, Chuck. With North Cover Life Insurance, applying is easy. It only takes one phone call with no medical, blood tests, or forms. Chuck, there's a step stool behind you. Your family may get an advance payout to cover funeral costs. And they will be looked after with a cash payout up to $1.5 million. Plus, if diagnosed with a terminal illness, 100% of the benefit can be received up front. Being well protected does feel good. North Cover, insurance the right way. Get a quote today. Call 1-844-552-1010 now or visit northcover.ca. Bear paws for bear parents? Sun bears asleep. Mmm, finally. <gasps> mm. Busted! Mm. New Bear Paws Crunchy Cookies, a shareable snack you won't want to share. There have been many attempts to bring back pedestrian traffic to Portage and Maine over the last few decades, but all have failed. But due to new information about repairs and traffic delays at this intersection, current Winnipeg Mayor Scott Gillingham has had a change of heart from past decisions and is working hard to take down these barricades to bring back pedestrian traffic. I believe that for the benefit of commuters and businesses, residents and taxpayers, we need to pursue a more practical alternative. It's time to open Portage of Maine to pedestrian traffic. It's an ongoing debate that might soon be coming to an end. Current Winnipeg Mayor Scott Gillingham announcing on March 1st that the famous intersection could be open to pedestrians for the first time since 1979. The plan is to put forward a draft to have the city open pedestrian traffic by the summer of 2025, coinciding with the new transit network. At the time of the plebiscite, Portage of Maine was the third busiest intersection in the city. It's now the sixth. It's not even the busiest intersection in the downtown. But in a city with more than 10,000 intersections, it's the only one that does not allow street level crossings. Folks, this is just an intersection. Traffic at Portage of Maine is down 10% from before the pandemic. Maintaining the walkway under the intersection would cost around $73 million to repair, which Gillingham does not want to do. Price tag on repairing the membrane and the associated works is $73 million. And we'd have to do that work again in 30 to 40 years because the membrane only lasts for so long. It would also require up to five years of traffic delays at the intersection because the work to replace the membrane would have to be done from the top. And the membrane really sits just below the Portage of Maine inter intersection. So for five years in segments, Portage of Maine would have to be ripped up for that work to be done. In light of all of that, so that we can avoid five years of traffic delays and avoid the $73 million price tag, I'm saying now's the time to decommission the concourse and open the intersection to pedestrian traffic. In 2018, 65% of voters opted to keep the barriers up at the intersection. Gillingham was against reopening the intersection and in 2022 said he would respect the results, but has had a change of heart. I don't regret, uh, you know, the decision I made then. I think many Winnipeggers might have voted differently during 2018 when, when they were voting on the plebiscite if they had the information. We just, we just didn't have the information at the time. It wasn't ready to come forward at the time. Now we have the updated costs and scope of the work that needs to be done. In light of this new information, I'm, you know, I'm making a different decision that I made back in 2018. Gillingham says he believes he has enough councillors in his favour to get a draft passed to move forward with his decision. Councillors I've spoken to, almost all the councillors uh, are that I've spoken to are in favour of opening the intersection to pedestrian park. So I believe we have enough support on, on council to, to get this passed. Folks, it's just an intersection. And I think that that's the key here, that Winnipeg has upwards of 10,000 intersections. This is just one of them. And it's the one that we seem to have so much interest in controlling. So I wasn't surprised that, uh, you know, we're gonna open it up because I really think that it, in the big scheme of things, it's not that big of an issue. 
Gino D'Astasio is an urban geography professor at the University of Winnipeg. He doesn't know why the topic of Portage in Maine has become such a polarizing discussion for Winnipeggers, but believes the decision is quite simple. In my view, the bunkers went up at a time where we really felt that we needed some kind of an expressway out of the downtown, and that by limiting pedestrians in one intersection within even the downtown was somehow make or break that plan. And I think now that as we've evolved over time, I think we've come to realize that it's okay. It's okay to mix people and cars and cars and bikes and buses. And in fact, often that's the missing ingredient on making cities, you know, vibrant and interesting. And it's not about limiting. It's about embracing the fact that cities are inherently busy and bustling and Portage and Maine as this really interesting, famous corner in Canada, windiest uh, places like today, like, wow, the wind is howling out there. I personally don't think that suddenly we're going to be inundated with tens of thousands of people clamoring to cross Portage and Maine. I, I think it's going to be one of those issues that once it's opened, we probably will just go about our day not really noticing any significant difference. D'Astasio is hoping the opening of the intersection adds to the dynamic of the above ground activity that people should be seeing on the ground floor of the four intersecting towers. He says it gives Winnipeg an extra opportunity. We've given 40 years to the idea of trying to grow the underground economy there. It hasn't necessarily held. So let's do this next experiment where we, we let people cross at grade and we hope that those four corners become active and lively that when you're coming into the downtown you actually see people bustling to get to, to different ev events and different amenities. It will also add to the overall experience of the downtown. I really truly believe the missing ingredient to take Winnipeg's downtown to the next level are people. People on the streets, people coming and going, people coming and going at different hours. And to see that at Portage and Maine, I think sends a signal that, and maybe it's a small one, but it's an important one saying, we're open. The city is open, the downtown is open, the streets and sidewalks are open. Come, walk through the city, it's okay. Winnipeg's downtown area over the last 15 years or so has seen enormous change and there continues to be more investments into the core. Zastasio says the last missing piece is having people occupy that space. People have thought about Portage and Maine as being this real center of uh, not quite a Times Square, but of a kind of a really interesting intersection. So maybe as we look forward in the next five to 10 years, maybe we start to see more activation of kind of the street life, whether it is through, you know, video, lighting, amenities. It's a real important corner that for the last 50 years has been kind of silent. So it'll be interesting to see how Portage Place gets awakened over the next, uh, Portage and Maine gets awakened over the next uh, five years as maybe, a, a, you know, a place to kind of walk through or walk to, right? Not walk under. The question of, of the century, will Winnipeggers walk across Portage and Maine within the next 12 months? And I think yes. I think it's just again a real no-brainer when you really think about it. And, and it's not to disrespect views that were against and, and really wanted to see traffic flows. I really think the next stage of this experiment of just letting people cross the street will work. It used to be me, she ate at snack time, but now she loves yogurt. Made with real fruit, smooth, creamy, and tasty, all I can say is whoa. Yogo, snack it up. Ladies and gentlemen, Behold the cross track wilderness. Out there, it's a beast. Ferocious, indomitable. It's hunger for adventure, insatiable. It turns the harshest of environments into its playground. And now, it performs for you. Introducing the ruggedly capable, all new Subaru Cross Track Wilderness. The 1970s. 
It was a time to find my fun. The hair was a real fire hazard, and so was the funky 1970s aluminum wiring installed in homes at the time. Expert Electric. It's time to upgrade and get the funk out. Max doesn't love cooking, but loves homemade meals with his kids. Even things we don't love can have benefits, like doing your taxes. Learn more about benefits and credits at Canada.ca slash every dollar counts. And now, there's a new product from Ferramax. Ferramax PD Maintenance 45 helps maintain normal iron levels and prevent iron deficiency. It's a once-daily, chewable, orange-flavored oral iron supplement with iron, vitamin B12, and vitamin C. Visit Ferramax.com. Everything in our collection represents a great deal we found on Skyscanner. We even got two matching tattoos. They say, we got a great deal on tickets to Bangkok. I thought it said love is eternal. It says that too. City TV or stream it on City TV Plus. Opening Portage in Maine is not just about bringing back the ability for pedestrians to walk this famous intersection, but it's about bringing life back to this intersection. And many are hoping that revamped foot traffic across this intersection will be a big boost to the economy sector. Portage in Maine is our, is our emblematic intersection and a city is judged by its downtown and our downtown is judged by this intersection. And so to have more uh, activity, more uh, fluid movement of people across the intersection, I think brings additional life to our downtown. Ryan Kuffner is the president and CEO of Economic Development Winnipeg. He's not only excited at the prospect of having pedestrian traffic reopened at the intersection, but says on an economic development stance, it will help a lot of the investment that is flowing into Winnipeg's downtown right now. It's a signal, first and foremost, that Winnipeg and our downtown is open for business. Uh, and it's, it's also a signal uh, to Winnipeggers and Manitobans that this is a place that, that they want to be. Both whether they want to uh, work, live or play downtown, the, their ability to cross this major intersection is, uh, is I think, uh, key for them to be able to enjoy all the amenities uh, that our downtown has to offer. Kuffner says there is already a lot to do at the corner of Portage and Maine and opening it up will bring more businesses and economic growth for our city. I think I see Portage and Maine in the next five to ten years um, becoming a catalyst for the resurgence of our downtown. There are additional projects like an agricultural center of excellence that we're working on and in partnership with others that would be right at this corner. I think this this intersection could actually be the beginning of how our downtown revitalizes uh, and how it continues to draw business, visitors and residents uh, downtown in a way that continues to define our great city. Locally, it's important, but nationally and internationally, uh, we're known for Portage and Maine. And when people come here, they want to know what that experience is like. And that experience is going to change completely thanks to the decisions of the mayor uh, and council and their leadership. The Manitoba Métis Federation, which owns the former Bank of Montreal, supports the reopening of the intersection. President David Chartrand says it will make the downtown vibrant and will bring forth foot traffic to places such as the new Métis Heritage Centre, which is under construction and set to open in 2026. Uh, we've purchased the old Bank of Montreal, which is now our new heritage uh, museum, which is being, in fact, under construction right now. Uh, we're spending about between 32 and 35 million dollars in construction. Uh, so we believe that we need to look at how do we um, change 
the, the feature uh, of the message of, of Manitoba and what role we play in the sense of uh, uh, enticing not only Canadians or Manitobans to come, but also enticing the world to come and see the Heritage Centre. It's going to be one of a kind and probably we anticipate, hopefully, one of the most talked about heritage centres in, in Canada and the world. Chartrand says opening up the intersection is important, but there are other things the city needs to do to make people want to come downtown. You have a, a crumbling uh, infrastructure and pretty soon it's going to be a ghost town. Uh, so I, I think it's wise for the city to look at innovative ways of bringing uh, a message about that we're proud of our city, we're proud of our downtown. And if it causes some inconvenience for some, I'd ask them to reflect their thoughts because pretty soon you see tumbleweeds rolling downtown uh, Portage because the, it, really Portage Avenue is, is, is actually starting to die and businesses are hurting and, and, and the image is hurting us as, as Manitobans and as Winnipeggers. We're investing the money to beautify it and I think the city is also looking at this new transition of not just changing the ability to walk, they're actually going to modify it in the context of beautifying downtown in the center of Portage and Maine where you're going to see trees, you're going to see uh, block, block uh, roads that people can actually maybe walk around and market approach kind of style. So uh, the pictures we're seeing are really, really going to, I think, impress a lot of Winnipeggers and Manitobans. And I think it will be a talk uh, of Canada after a while.